Today we're gonna make some crates and they're gonna be made of cherry plywood and Baltic birch and you're thinking, with lumber prices the way they are, are you crazy? Aren't they just cheaper to buy them from the store? And the answer is no. So we're gonna make these. I'm gonna show you how I did it. Join me. Okay, before I get into this, let me just explain that you could still make these things if you want, and they're cheaper than buying them at the store. Lumber prices are pretty crazy. Plywood prices, well, dimensional lumber and pressure treated plywood has gone up quite a bit. Standard plywood hasn't gone up the same uh, percentage. So, you know, I, I, I got this cherry plywood and Baltic birch still from my plywood dealer, although Baltic birch is, is harder to find. And, uh, I'm probably gonna do a video about that soon. Um, but I made these here. Now I did a little hybrid action here. I used the CNC, don't turn away, to make the ends, okay? And I just ripped these strips on the table saw. Now, anytime I can use a CNC to make anything, I try to at least at this point, because I'm still a rookie, I'm still learning the machine, still learning Vectrix uh, VCar Pro, uh, but it worked out pretty well. Um, this little piece here is actually scalable back and forth uh, to make larger ones, smaller ones, medium, you name it. Um, yeah, so pretty fun little thing to do. All right, we'll see how I did it. Let's go, let's get into it. So I got my piece of plywood down on the CNC. We're gonna clamp that in place with some brad nails at the corners. And then I'm gonna go into VCarve Pro and I'm gonna model the pieces I need. I'm gonna set the tool path, the passes, all that good stuff. Pretty cool, cause you get to generate what you're gonna see in the final result. You can look at it in a 3D space. I'm gonna save this file to a jump drive. We're gonna put it on the CNC handheld controller. And we're gonna get to cutting. All right, we're gonna touch down this eighth inch end mill on this brass disc, basically letting the machine know where to start the cut in terms of its depth. I'm not gonna necessarily use tabs in here. Tabs are little pieces of wood left over to keep pieces from moving around. If you use a down cut bit, a lot of times the dust gets so packed in there, you don't need tabs for this. Again, it's not recommended, but it's something that uh, I've, I've worked with and it seems to work pretty well for me. And of course, I wanna thank Bits and Bits, Penguin CNC, and of course, Vetric with their VCarve Pro software. All the companies that are helping me along the CNC journey, I'm gonna link down below in the description. So go check them out. Okay, over to the table saw. We're gonna rip down strips that are basically gonna fill the voids of those little pieces that were protruding out in all of the ends that you saw me cut on the CNC. Then I'm gonna take them to the cross cut sled and essentially this cut is gonna determine the length of your crate. This is Baltic birch. This is a little bit thinner material. This is 3 8 of an inch. And again, the same process. We're gonna cut these to the length we want. That's gonna give us the length of crate that we desire. And as you can see, everything's ready to go. Time for some assembly. All right, truth be told, this is the first run at doing this and I thought it would be a great idea to build this thing vertically up in the air. I don't know why. I figured the tolerances that were tight enough between the slats and the end pieces were gonna be everything I needed to hold it really nice and snugly in place. And it did for the most part, but I would just recommend doing this on the table or on your bench and don't do it up in the air like I did because it took me a little longer than it probably should have. And we just tack it together with some brads. Now you can use glue if you'd like. Of course, it would make it a lot stronger, but I figured for the applications that we're gonna be doing, I don't necessarily need to. And plus, I didn't wanna have to deal with squeeze out as well. So this is gonna work just fine for us. So one thing I had to keep in mind is I had to leave one of the spacers on the corners a little bit shy, about a half inch shy of the others because I wanted the ends to meet up at a 90 degree angle. Here's what I mean. I put the last piece on the bottom here and the piece on the side, you can see goes right in and it's flush up against the long part of the last piece on the bottom. In fact, that's the only place that the two slats actually touch each other. And I do like to come back and reinforce those with brads as well, right there. And just like that, that is my first crate in this project complete. A little hand sanding to break all the edges to give it a nice soft feel as well. Moving on to the second one. Now I'm gonna make seven of these, but I'm not gonna share every single part of every single one, of course. I do value your time. And we're gonna make sure we sand everything nice and flush. And again, a light hand sanding like you saw me do before is definitely key. And this little small one actually turned out pretty nice too. 
I like the feel of it. And of course, when you're finished with something like this, you got to give it the obligatory spin back and forth and might as well have fun with it. Why not? And there you go. Those are the three crates in the first batch. And I think they turned out pretty nice. We do need to finish them. And I'm going to discuss a couple different ways to finish. And of course, the first is going to be Yep, spray lacquer. Just a coat of matte clear works really well. And then every time I use teak oil or any type of oil, I always spill some just in case I wanna redo the surface of my workbench as well. I'm not sure if you guys do that, but this is completely on purpose. Yeah. And so with most oil finishes, you can flood the surface and then buff out the rest after a few minutes. And this is no different. Essentially, I flooded the surface with a foam brush. That cherry really looks great. And then I came back and buffed it off with a rag. And then we're gonna build a few more. And I learned a few things in the first couple I made that, well, one, I do need to put a quarter inch round over on the handles. That was definitely something that was missing in the first few I made. As you see here, yeah, it does take a little more time, but it, the end is worth it. It gives the crate just a better feel on your hands, for sure. Definitely don't skip this step. So as I build these remaining crates, I'm gonna definitely recommend you build it down on your workbench. Don't put it up in the air like I did the first time. Just tack these in place as you go. And I did find that the only place that did need some glue, for me at least, was on the corners, where those long pieces meet up, where the slats meet up. I did put a bead of CA glue down, a little activator as well, and that seemed to work really well. Okay, with these built and assembled with a little light sanding, I'm gonna take them out and apply some more finish. And honestly, I found that spray lacquer was my finishing choice for these. Nothing wrong with the oil, it looked great. However, this was just a little bit easier. A couple coats, they dry. These coats dry in about five minutes, so you can honestly do this so quickly. And then once they're dry, you take them back into the workshop, and I use a medium density Scotch Brite pad, and it's gonna kind of you know knock off some of the I don't know, I call them fuzzies, but what happens is the spray lacquer leaves a little bit of film and a little bit of roughness, and this kind of just makes it buttery smooth, man. So use one of these Scotch-Brite pads, you won't regret it. You're gonna come up with a really great result, even though it is a crate. If you're gonna make something, make something nice. You might as well. All right, let's take them in the house. All right, before we wrap this up, let's talk price. I know you guys are probably curious about how much this actually costs with lumber prices the way they are today. That piece of plywood is four by eight. Well, it was, I used half of it for this project. It's cherry veneer and it was $52 at my local hardwood dealer. Now your prices may vary, but this is what I paid. Um, the Baltic birch, <clears throat> I've had on hand for quite a bit, but the global supply of Baltic birch is not nearly what it used to be, and it's a little scary, um, but my plywood dealer still had some, and they still sold it at the price that they bought it. Not, not the price they bought it, but they bought it for a certain price, they mark it up, you know, and that's what they sold it at. They didn't price gouge it knowing that there was a limited supply. Um, the strips that I used are 3 eighths in thickness, um, some were even quarter inches in thickness, and everything total cost about 55 bucks. Okay, $55 to make seven crates of various sizes, and they're way nicer than anything you can get at a retailer, and plus, it's another one of those projects that's fun to do. Um, and they're super functional, and my wife is very happy that I made these finally. She has something cool that is, you know, it looks nice. It doesn't look like pallet wood kind of stacked on top of each other with staples that may or may not be, you know, working. <laughs> All right, that's all I got. So this was a cool project. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this has inspired you to get out there, even, even to make something as rustic as this, but to try to make them a little bit nicer. And again, like I said, you don't need that darn machine. You don't need a CNC. It is nice to have for sure. And I want to thank Penguin uh, for helping me with this project. But you can do this with a straight old rectangle and just put a spacer in there and tack in some strips that you cut on the table saw, really simple. I've done a ton of those as well. But this is one of those things where I wanted to try to really practice my skill set and increase what I know in the digital fabrication world. So I decided why not use something as green acres as, as crates to accomplish half of that task. All right, that's all I got. Thanks guys so much. I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget, get out there and make life better. I got t-shirts that say that. I'm not good about letting you guys know. They're all linked down below. I got hats on my website, stuff like that. You can check it out. All right, see you guys later. Take care.